No means no. How many times have you said this to your toddler only to find yourself in an exhausting power struggle? If you're nodding your head right now, you're not alone. Setting boundaries with toddlers can feel exhausting. But what if I told you there's a way to make it not only effective, but actually strengthen your relationship with your little one? Today, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set effective boundaries that work with your toddler's developing brain, not against it. First, let's talk about what a boundary is and why setting boundaries is so crucial. In parenting, a boundary is a clear limit or rule that defines what is acceptable behavior and what is not. Boundaries aren't just about controlling behavior. They're about creating a safe, predictable environment where your toddler can thrive. They help develop self-control, respect for rules, and contribute to a calmer home environment. Plus, they're essential for your sanity as a parent. Before we jump into the how-to, it's important to identify key areas where boundaries are needed. Usually boundaries are needed when it comes to things like safety, routines, social behavior, screen time, food choices, and more, but ultimately this is up to you to determine as the parent based off of your family values. So now let's break down boundary setting into five simple steps, but make sure you stick around because after that, I have some other tips that you're definitely going to want to consider. So step one is to set clear age appropriate expectations. Your toddler's brain is still developing, so complex rules with long explanations are a no-go. When setting expectations, use positive language. So instead of don'ts, focus on what you do want to see. So for example, instead of saying no yelling, try we use our indoor voices. This tells your toddler clearly exactly what you expect. You want to be specific about your expectations. Saying something like be good is way too vague for a toddler. Instead, try something like we sit at the table during mealtimes or we use gentle hands with the dog. And here's a pro tip. Involve your toddler in setting some expectations when possible. They are going to be more likely to follow the rules that they helped create. And you might be surprised what they come up with. Also remember that expectations should be age appropriate. Your two-year-old probably isn't ready for the expectation of dressing themselves completely, but they might be able to put their dirty clothes in the hamper or to help pick out their shirt for the day. You want to start small and then build up from there. I know it's hard to know what your toddler or preschooler should or shouldn't be able to do. So if you need more help with this, then check out the link in the description box to come join us in the Life with Littles Lounge, which is my membership exclusively for toddler and preschool parents, where we guide you through things just like this. Also make sure you're subscribed to this channel and turn on your notifications for even more tips. Before we move on to step two, I also want to invite you to briefly explain the reason behind the expectation. And the key here is briefly. Even if your child doesn't fully understand it, you're modeling reasoning skills. So for example, we wash our hands before we eat to keep our bodies healthy, or we use walking feet inside so we don't get hurt. Step two is to communicate boundaries effectively. This is crucial because even the best expectations won't work if your toddler doesn't understand them. Get down on your toddler's eye level when you're speaking with them so that you're present and engaged with them. Next, you want to use a calm but firm voice. Your tone matters just as much as your words. If you sound uncertain, your toddler will pick up on that. But remember, firm doesn't mean angry or harsh. Think of it as confident and matter of fact. Using visual aids can also be a game changer, especially for younger toddlers who are still developing their language skills. For example, a visual schedule for routines can work wonders. If you'd like to grab these printable picture cards, I'll have them linked in the description box below. You want to let them know exactly what will happen if the boundary is crossed. So for example, if you don't stay on this part of the playground, we'll have to leave the park. Or if you throw your toy, I will take it away. Step three is to be consistent. This is where the true test comes in because a lot of parents struggle here. Consistency is the secret sauce that makes boundaries stick, but let's be real, it's also one of the toughest parts of parenting. But what does consistency really mean? It's about enforcing your expectations the same way every time across different situations. So if jumping on the couch is a no-go on Monday, it needs to be a no-go on Friday too, even when you're exhausted and tempted to let it slide. Now here is where it gets tricky because boundary testing is like a sport for toddlers. They'll push and push to see if that boundary will budge. And sometimes in a moment of weakness or exhaustion, you might give in and we've all been there. Trust me, me too. But remember, every time you let a boundary slide, you're essentially telling your toddler that sometimes if they push hard enough, the rules don't apply. The more consistent you are, the easier it will be in the future. 
But let's elaborate on that a little bit with step four, which is to handle boundary testing. So how exactly do you stay consistent when you're running on fumes and your toddler is in full blown boundary pushing mode? Here are a few tips. The first thing you want to do is remind yourself why the boundary exists. Is it for safety to teach respect to maintain a routine? Keeping the why in mind can help you stand firm. Next, you want to have a plan for tough moments. Maybe it's taking a deep breath or having a mantra like I can do hard things, whatever works for you. You want to give yourself grace. If you do slip up because you're human, don't beat yourself up, acknowledge it and get back on track. Step five is to use positive reinforcement. So this is catching your toddler being good. Praise them when they follow the rules and offer specific compliments like great job waiting your turn. Now, here are some bonus tips for more success. So first you want to remember to adjust your expectations as needed. Your toddler is growing and changing rapidly. Be willing to reassess and modify rules that aren't working and then communicate the changes to your toddler. Next, you want to model boundary respect to yourself. Show your toddler how you respect other people's boundaries and follow the rules in your own life. They're always watching and learning from you. Next, you want to get on the same page with your partner if you have one. And staying consistent extends to all of the caregivers in your child's life. This means getting on the same page with your partner, grandparents, babysitters, and even teachers if possible. Setting and holding boundaries is much harder when it's done inconsistently across caregivers. Remember, setting and holding boundaries is a process. It takes patience, consistency, and a whole lot of deep breaths. But the payoff is huge. A child who feels secure, understood, and capable of managing their own behavior as they grow. Remember, you're not just raising a toddler, you're raising a future adult. The boundaries you set now are laying the foundation for a lifetime of healthy relationships and self-regulation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on how to love your life with littles. Don't forget to check out the membership for tons of support and resources to help you raise your little ones. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.